Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am thrilled to be with the cast of Strange New Worlds, one of my favorite shows on television. I want to thank you so much for coming to the Collider Media Studio, whatever the hell we're calling this. I just want to say a sincere thank you. Um, uh, what has it actually been like for you guys here at Comic-Con? Have you done your panel yet? I apologize for not knowing. Uh, yeah. Next, no. right after this. Yeah. Oh, really? So what is, are you guys ready for like the experience you're about to have? Because it's going to play like a rock concert when you guys come out on the stage. Yeah, I have no, obviously Anson and Ethan and, and Paul are all, but me, me and Sally, it's our first kind of proper time like, with Star Trek. So it's like, I have no real idea of what it's going to be like. Yeah. Um, it's our first real in-person interaction with the fans. So on this massive of a scale, yeah. this is sort of our, our, our first, uh, uh, I don't know, we're, gathering after the, the the seasons come out and and i i'm not prepared for for what's about to happen i'm excited but uh excited terrified a little nauseous but like really really excited the, the thing that's really hard to pull off like i so many people i know love your show myself included do you have you been paying attention to just because fandom really loves it i'm just curious if you guys have been do you, do you read that stuff or not at all a, a little bit yeah i mean i i I don't know. I I come from the theater, and you, you typically you you learn not to read your own reviews, and never believe the ones that are really really great, or never believe the ones that are really really bad. But I sort of I guess I've gotten to the point where I I can separate myself from all that, and I just want to get a temperature, a gauge for fan reaction, especially uh, with a show like this that has such a built-in fan base and really culture. Uh, you just, I just wanted to get a sense of what, what nails were hitting. So, uh, yeah, a little bit for fans of the show. I, and, and for myself, I love learning about like the behind the scenes of the making of a series or a movie. So what do you think fans of the series would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the show? Sully and I um, danced a lot at each other from our chairs on the bridge. So we threw I lots of shapes at each other. Th throwing shapes, a lot of dancing, yeah. a lot of movement, trying to stay like up and, and animated during those like fourteen hour bridge days. So uh, uh, th there's a lot of goofiness and shenaniganry that goes on oh, and <laughs> when, when we're not me, shooting. They taught me some um, some choreography. choreography. Oh yeah, we taught them the, the, the chorus line dance. Yeah, yeah, which Ethan will be doing at the panel. <laughs> yes. Absolutely not. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Yeah. Please tell me you have video of this and are putting it online. Uh, Someone has. They tried. They tried. I think so. I, I, think I would not participate. You tried to oh, film no, it secretly. Uh, we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it. If we don't have it now, we'll get it to you by next time. By this time uh, next year, you'll have it. Is there any other surprising things people might be, you know, for behind the scenes stuff? You and I have a hard time getting through a scene. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> We literally will True. hold up for, for like hours. Like it, people we're are the not worst. happy. Yeah. Like it, it, oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul and I. She's very funny. Yeah, he's he's an idiot <laughs> in the best way. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. But we just it's a lot of people get annoyed. <laughs> uh, you're gonna get to see more of the ship uh, as the show progresses. We get to build more of the Enterprise. And so we're getting to see some of that. Some of it's been released online already, oh, but yeah, yeah. Oh, and that Runa, my dog, she is actually Anson's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she comes to set, she's like the set mascot and she, everybody loves her. Spock will play raccoon with her, you know, and everybody, you love her, don't you? I do. <laughs> you do love her, as, do as love does Celia. I too love her very much, that's <laughs> so, my niece. Yeah, she's like, she's always around, running around. One of the things that's so interesting about Strange New Worlds is that while everything is pushing to being serialized, the the, the show is episodic. And I love it because uh, I, I just love it. And you guys get to, it's almost like a pilot every week, you know? And so can you sort of talk about that aspect of the series? Because a lot of people might see this interview and actually have not seen the show yet. Yeah, our, our showrunner Akiva talks a lot about the, the freedom that, that that brings, which is you wouldn't expect it seems like a more it would be a more structured thing or less freedom but actually when you have a new story every week or a new planet every week you can also change the mode and the tone and so we've been really pushing the boundaries with that in the second season and and seeing how many different kinds of genres and things we can get away with and 
being able to invite many different kinds of directors with many different kinds of styles, it's just been a joy. Where are you actually in the filming process of season two? We, we're wrapped. done. Oh, yeah, we finished. We wrapped at the end of June. I'm trying to. I'm looking at my clock in my head, and I'm realizing, got it. Uh, it's about three weeks ago. Right. Yeah. So That's what? Wow, it feels what, like forever ago. What, can, <laughs> what can you actually? What are you allowed to say about season two? What, what, that it is coming at some point. <laughs> That's what we can tell you. I, I mean, listen, it's obviously going to be next year because of the VFX involved in making a series like this. But uh, if you can, how is it different? From the first season, um, is it what did you guys learn making the first season that maybe carried over into the second season? Henry describes season two as season one on steroids. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's probably the most accurate way to put it. Yeah, I agree. It takes everything to another level. And uh, for example, the fantasy episode, episode eight, which was kind of like a kind of came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. that will be topped. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In season two. Um, I am curious how Kirk plays in in season two as he was a late addition. Yeah, in the first I, I said in a previous interview that the success of season one is solely on my you know my yeah. 14 minutes of screen time in the in the finale. Um, no, I'm excited because season the finale of, of um, season one was was, you know, obviously based on Balance of Terror, which was the original series episode, which was quite a intense episode. And so I'm looking forward to season two because Kirk gets to kind of let loose a little bit, have a little more fun and and. and and be a little and not and not be alt future timeline Kirk. He gets to be, you know, young Kirk um, um, in the in the original series canon. So um, I'm excited to explore that. If you don't mind, I, I want to do a follow up. Kirk is one of the iconic characters in sci fi. What was it like for you the night before the first day of filming? Did you sleep at all? You know, how were you thinking about approaching it? The the when I had my meeting with with Henry and Akiva, um, it was just, you know, the, the, the big sort of thing was just like, don't try to do a Shatner impression. Don't, you know, don't take what's been already done and try to do your own spin. Uh, do your own thing. Do what basically do whatever you want is really kind of they really entrusted me. And so I didn't have that pressure of having to fit. You know, obviously you are working within parameters, but, you know, it's an alt timeline. It's an alt future. And really, they were like, just do your own thing because and, and, and it'll take time. But eventually that will be that version of Kirk. And so it's really about kind of respecting it, but not trying to mimic it. One of the other things I really love is the way that uh, Pike is dealing with the future. And, you know, he knows what's coming, tried to even possibly alter it. Um, can you sort of talk about that aspect? Because it's, it's just a great. I think it's just something everyone would think about if I know my horizon is this, what would I do? Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to say that you've accepted something and it's another thing to actually accept it. Uh -huh. And so that's the the journey for Pike in, in season one. And I think ultimately it's a successful one. He gets to the point where I think that, uh, you know, I've, I, I've had the honor of meeting a, a couple of people in my life with terminal diagnoses who will say I've never been more alive uh, because I, I know the end point and I know how many days I have left and I'm going to live them to my to my fullest. I think that we're going to get to see a more more fully realized, more accepting um, Pike who's making the most of out of what he has left. But one of the things I really love about the show is the fact that like there's great writing between all the characters and it just and it's unusual sometimes in the first season of a of a show to have it where the writers feel like they know these characters and the actors feel like they have these characters. So can you sort of talk about what it was like reading these scripts? How much did was did it end up being like rainbow color scripts by the time you're filming or was do you know what I mean like the behind the scenes of the writing? Um, I, I gotta say, it's it it uh, you do do shows where you get the rainbow of colors and the, because there's so many rewrites. But um, on this show, we we didn't go through too many colors. I mean, they were they were very confident scripts mm -hmm. um, that came to us pretty well realized. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so much so in fact that uh, you know they won't release to us. Like everyone else on set will be like, "Have you seen the next episode?" And we're like, like, "No." no. <laughs> and everybody else gets it before us for that reason because they want them to be super polished so we can prepare i guess more precisely and more accurately but yeah they they kind of don't really do big um revisions for the scripts. but they're they're really good this this writing team they're really good about getting us the, the scripts at, at least 
a week early for the most part yeah yeah, yeah so that, because some you there you'll be on shows where you'll get the script the night before or sometimes there'll be a rewrite the day of and but they they've really protected our our preparation time for each of you talk a little bit about what you and it's a little generic but i i want to ask it anyway what you really love about the character you play like what you relate to and because you i really love your performances on the series I would say the the thing that I love about Uhura, wh wh where we meet her um, and, and not who she ends up being, is we see her sort of second guess herself, which is a very human thing. I think so much about Starfleet is is perfect. And and it, it's when you think of Starfleet, you think of people who are at the the best of what they do and, and at the top of their game. And we know who Uhura is going to be and who she's going to grow into. And the fact that we see her second guess herself like any human would, it, it's her, her humanity and her humility that, that I really, really love. I, with La'an, I love uh, covering her vulnerability. Like, you know, she's a fighter. She's got all this stuff going on, but she's fighting to win over it. And even though she, you know she has this PTSD and whatever, she's at, at the core of it. She she wants to grow. She wants to learn. She wants to move beyond her her past. So to play the conflict of that of the barrier that she has, the bravado, and also the the soft inner world of her is is really interesting for me. You want to go? Sure, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I can go. Uh, I think you should go. I'll go first. I feel good about you going. Um, <laughs> for, uh, for all of Spock's uh, precision and certainty in his knowledge in a, in a given situation and just the breadth of knowledge he has about physics and science, he's, he's sort of an answers guy in a, in a lot of situations. He's so deeply uncertain. And I really love that contrast and kind of discovering those moments of uncertainty and uh, letting that inform who he is. Um, yeah, I think for, for Kirk, you know, one of the sort of pillars of, of that character is that he really does have a unique internal instinct that is his guiding light. And that really, that instinct is something that if he taps into, he really does listen to that. Um, and, and it really does guide him in the, in the correct direction. And that's something that I relate to is that I do think a lot of us know what to do, uh, mm -hmm. deep down inside, but we second guess ourselves a bazillion times. And I think mm -hmm. Kirk is someone who just relies on his instinct and he makes those decisions and they work out. Um, so I, I love, that's probably my favorite thing about the character that I can relate to. I just love our writer's instinct to make Pike the really the first captain we've seen who has the ability to turn to his crew and go, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Does anybody have any idea? <laughs> Best idea wins, go. That's, yeah. if Pike had a superpower, it would be turning that bridge crew into a big brain. Sure. You know, and I just I think it makes for much more exciting bridge scenes that way. I know that a lot of people are going to love the action scenes or when two characters are on a planet doing something. But like some of my favorite stuff was or one of my favorite scenes in I forget what episode number it was, but it's when everyone is going to the captain's quarters to have a meal and it's all the characters together getting to talk. And it's like, I mean, so, but I also know a lot of actors and they tell me those dinner scenes or eating scenes suck. <laughs> they are the worst because you have to decide what you're gonna actually eat. You get, do you show up hungry? Do you show up full? Like, are you spitting in a bucket? So can you sort of talk a little bit about filming like eating scenes and also filming that scene? Because it's just, that's the stuff I love. It's when the characters are all interacting. I think I was uh, flying the ship in that scene. Yeah, was that episode two? Uh, of of no. the one where uh, before Ortega uh, uh, pranks Uhura when she's wearing her dress uniform. Is that the oh, yeah. scene? That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. episode two. Um, <clears throat> and that scene, I they, they went very easy on me. I only had a little thing of tea because I was so very anxious. And I think if Uhura ate anything, she'd immediately get sick. Um, not because Pike's cooking would make her sick, but because she <laughs> is so nervous about what's happening. Um, I, I love dinner scenes. I love scenes where we're all together and like interacting because the way we shoot, sometimes you'll only see like one person for the whole day, depending on the scenes that are going on. Those big scenes, obviously, they take a lot of time. But they're fun. Yeah, but they're fun. It, it's like a, a summer camp. Those, that's what it feels like to me. I don't know. There was but. a scene where Babs had to be like Wolf. Babs, who plays Dr. Mbanga, was, had to be wolfing yeah. down like waffles. Waffles and with, bacon. Yeah, and it was, yeah. I felt really bad for him. Because <laughs> he went for it from the first take. Yeah. Well, I, I know some people, um, like Joel Kinnaman was telling me on For All Mankind, when there's like food scenes, he just eats. He's like, he's like, I have five meals, I don't care. And other people I know are like, I don't take a bite. Like it goes right out. So 
I know you must have all have filmed a food scene at one point. What's your secret to the food scene? I just go for it. Oh, oh so you eat. Oh, you yeah. No, there, there's one scene um, uh, in our uh, when you're about to um, uh, hound me about those data chips. Episode six. Episode yeah. six. And I'm just wolfing down mm -hmm. these noodles and dumplings. And I just went for it because it's yummy. It was. But uh, I just I, I think I go for it just because it's it's I don't know. I'm, I'm a huge fan of like head first, go for it, see what sticks. Yeah, I take small bites of its food. And if it's if it's drink, then it's some version of water. I'm sensible, like Laon. I, I just remember the, the when I learned uh, when I learned about being careful how much you're eating in a scene was um, when I did Crossroads and we had a scene in a in a Waffle House and I love Waffle House mm -hmm. and I knew exactly what I wanted to order right and we must have shot that scene 32 oh, no times. I ended up eating 13 <gasps> trucker specials <laughs> and. And by so by there are some there are some cutaways in that scene where I'm sitting next to to, to Britney Spears and I'm just like just Ew. <laughs> <laughs> and then after we finished, I had to go into the men's room and and oh, wow. purge. Mm. Wow. And then had a Not night bad. on the town in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys want to add? Oh, um. What? Except it's all his brother's fun whiskey. Right? That's right. It's my own whiskey, and that's uh, <laughs> it's a secret to Kirk. Um, no, that'd be nice though. Um, uh, yeah, well, actually, I did a, a big food scene in season two. Yes, you did. Um, yeah. and huge uh, spoiler, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> massive spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna yeah. get a call from Paramount. Um, <laughs> no, and uh, what I a lot of like air chewing, mm. air chewing, and then uh, you know, spit bucket. But sometimes you're just hungry. She was just hungry, man. And no, I was hungry. What? But remember, you had the vegetables instead. Your vegetables. <laughs> what are you Do you not remember about? when you had no. the radishes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> radishes <laughs> and carrots. Wait, that was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's there's a, in a wide shot, in a wide shot, that I, I they give you all this like heavy food. And I was like, give me something that's like, I'm not going to, if I if I do it 20 takes. So I, I had like radishes and cucumbers that I sort of pretended were my main meal. And it worked in the wide. Mm. And I was really eating that with a lot of... <laughs> my oh yeah my I secrets want, yeah mm -hmm. i have a scene in season two where i have to eat a lot of something kind of disgusting <laughs> and i had a spit bucket oh, yeah. and um it was a it was a it was a crime scene i mean uh, uh, no, I, uh, doing a lot of drinking a lot of eating remember when we're all at the table oh yeah right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yeah. Uh, so what is it like a lot of shows and I'm curious what it is for for your show. Some shows are, you know, a seven day shoot, eight day shoot, 10 day shoot. What is it actually for Strange New Worlds? And does it depend on the episode? Uh, average is uh, about 12, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit more than that, because we do have a couple episodes that go closer to 15. Not result? including second unit. Sure, but is that a result because of COVID and the precautions, or is no. that just because it takes no, that long? No, that's the, that's the trick of making an action-adventure show set in a series of little rooms and hallways. Mm -hmm. It just takes longer. I'm very curious about the T-shirt. What was the motivation for Star Trek V? Because I love it, and I also love that it's the Japanese version. I just love wearing... I, like, I, I feel like I'm on like, the coolest team in the world, and I love... like I haven't been on this team in a long time, and so to be able to like wear gear for my team authentically like i just enjoy that so much and this i actually got um we did our first appearance as a cast well with celia at uh mission chicago which is a like a cbs sponsored uh convention and um it, it's just it's from there and uh i think it's cool <laughs> ethan has a series of like really awesome star trek shirts that he like has a closet of i'm building a, i'm building a collection yeah it's yeah they're, be, they're pretty sick yeah, it's gonna be massive I'm going to give you a pointer, and I don't know if you've done it already, but they still, some places online still sell iron-on t-shirts, if you can find them, because the iron-ons are like, you know, over time they wear out, but if you might be able to find some vintage Trek iron-on shirts, which is something to think about. Dry clean them. Get on it, dude. Yeah. He's on a mission. Establish the collection. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm being completely serious. There used to be a shirt, a place in Vancouver uh, uh, that, I forget the name of it, but it was right in the main part of town, and it was... I would always go in there and was amazed at what they had. But um, you're in, you guys shoot in Ontario, right? Yeah. yeah so it's, yeah. yeah. Um, on that note, I'm, I've been given the hook. So I'm just going to say, I love your show. 
Thank you so much for coming in. I wish you guys nothing but the best. I know your panel is going to play like a rock concert. Really, really enjoy it. Um, thank you. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.